हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी नॉन लीनियर इफेक्ट्स इनसाइड द ऑप्टिकल फाइबर कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल स्टडी इंट्रोडक्शन टू द नॉन लीनियरिटीज इन एन ऑप्टिकल फाइबर कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी टू इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर्स इफेक्टिव लेंथ एंड इफेक्टिव एरिया फॉर नॉन लीनियर ऑप्टिकल फाइबर कम्युनिकेशन द टाइप्स ऑफ नॉन लीनियरिटीज दैट आर एस आर एस एस पी एस एस पी एम एक्स पी एम एफ डब्ल्यू एम जी वी डी एंड सॉलिटन्स these topics we will study in upcoming lectures so introduction part whenever we design a communication system it is a design objective to achieve improved bit error rate at the output so what is output power output power we define as output power equal to input power minus system losses input power is the power that we give as an input at the one end of the optical fiber and output power is the power that we receive at the another end of the optical fiber and during this course of propagation of the optical signal the signal undergo through some losses those are called system losses from the above equation it seems natural that increasing input power may result in increased output power because this relationship seems to be a linear relationship output power is proportional to input power when system losses are constant but this assumption is valid as long as input power versus output power relationship is linear and system losses are constant which is not always the case as input power levels increases beyond a threshold value system losses are not constant but they varies according to value of the input power this makes input power versus output power relation non linear as we can see in this curve on x axis we have taken input power on y axis we have taken the output power so ideally the relationship between input power and output power should have been a linear one as depicted by this line it's a linear line it's a linear behavior but in practice as soon as the input power crosses a certain threshold value this relationship tends to become a non linear so this behavior will become a non linear behavior because of this non linear behavior for the same amount of input applied power ideally we should have got this amount of output power but now because of non linear behavior we are getting some reduced power at the output and this reduction in power is called non linear power penalty so when any non linear effect contributes to signal strength reduction the amount of optical power reduction in decibels is the power penalty for that effect when input power increases beyond a threshold value any of these two effects may take place one is scattering another is refractive index variation now what is origin of the non linear effects in optical fibers the origin of non linear effects in optical fiber is due to ultra fast third order susceptibility chi 3 this is third order order susceptibility it is a complex quantity it has both real and imaginary parts in it so the real part of susceptibility leads to the self phase modulation spm cross phase modulation xpm four wave mixing fwm these three type of non linearities are due to intensity dependent variation in refractive index these are because of refractive index variation this is also called care effect the imaginary part of susceptibility leads to stimulated bulline scattering sbs or stimulated raman scattering srs these non linearities are due to inelastic scattering process so as a summary we can say as a summary we can say that index related non linearities leads to self phase modulation in a single channel system and cross phase modulation and four way mixing in a multiple channel or wdm system and scattering related non linearities leads to stimulated bulline scattering in a single channel system and stimulated raman scattering in multiple channel system or wdm system the effects of non linearities are sbs srs and four way mixing they result in gain or losses in a channel power variations depend on optical signal intensity 
these processes provide gain to some channels while depleting power from other channels because power transfer takes place from one channel to another channel in in these processes these effects produce crosstalk between the wavelength channels because of the same reason that power is trans getting transferred from one channel to another channel therefore crosstalk will take place four wave mixing can be suppressed through special arrangement of fibers having different dispersion characteristics so we can use dispersion shifted fibers to mitigate the effects of four wave mixing cell phase modulation and cross phase modulation they affect only phase of the signals which causes chirping in the digital pulses this chirping can worsen pulse broadening due to dispersion particularly at high data rate systems like 40 gbps systems it can worsen the pulse broadening when any of these non linear effects contribute to signal impairments an additional amount of power will be needed at the receiver to maintain the same ber as in the absence of these non linearities this additional power is called power penalty for that effect next we are going to study two important parameters fiber parameters one is fiber effective fiber length and another is effective fiber cross sectional area so this is an optical fiber this is the length of the optical fiber and this is cross sectional area so non linear effects they will increase with the power but as all of us know that power is reducing over the link length exponentially because of the attenuation therefore the severity of non linearity has to reduce along the link length non linear effects will be more prominent at the transmitter end because of high power levels and low attenuation power per unit area power per unit area decreases as the fiber core diameter increases and vice versa so what is effective length the non linear effects increases with distance but they are offset by continuous decrease in signal power along the fiber due to attenuation therefore we can use a simple model that assumes that the power is constant over an effective length l effective which is given by l effective is equal to 1 minus e raised to the minus alpha l divided by alpha where l is actual length of the fiber and alpha is attenuation constant we can understand this by this graph here on x axis we have taken the link length and on y axis we have taken the power so as the link length increases power decreases exponentially as shown by this graph so here we can say that power is decreasing exponentially with the link length but as for the simple purpose we want to assume a model that where power is constant therefore we have taken an assumption that this power is constant up to a link length l effective this makes this shaded area equal to the area under this curve so area under this power distribution curve should be equal to this shaded area in this particular case the effective length l effective turns out to be this which is less than or equal to the actual length of the fiber for power attenuation of 0.22 db per kilometer at 15 15 nanometer the effective length is approximately 20 km so we can assume that up to 20 km of length power will be constant or there will be minimal effect of non linearities next parameter is effective area non linear effects increases with the light intensity for a given optical power this intensity is inversely proportional to area of the fiber core as the area of the fiber core increases power per unit decreases in practice one can use effective cross sectional area a effective which assumes a uniform intensity distribution across most of the core this area can be obtained using mode overlap integrals and in general it is close to the actual core area we can understand it by this particular curve where this curve shows the actual intensity distribution across the fiber core this is center of the fiber and this is fiber radius on the x axis on the y axis we have relative intensity so at the core intensity is maximum and as we move towards the cladding this intensity reduces exponentially as we have already studied in the fundamentals of the optical fiber communication but for simplicity we are assuming that this intensity distribution is constant so for that we assume effective area to be a effective in such a way 
that area under this actual curve remain equal to the effective area A effective. So this is how effective length and effective area are considered for the optical fiber communication. In the next lecture, we are going to study different types of non-linearities. If you have any queries, you can post them at discussion forum of www.chetansilwal.com and for lecture notes, you can also visit this website. Thank you.